Um, yeah, hi guys, I've met a few of you over the years. Um, I used to do Ag Force Feral Animal Management for six or seven years, running these workshops. Uh, my background is commercial uh, financial industry, um, and I just got the bug. I had a midlife crisis and studied wildlife management, ended up working with Ag Force for seven years. Um, met Clint and a few other fantastic people along the way, but what I'm talk going to talk about today is, is sporting shooters. Sporting shooters, um, there's about 65,000 sporting shooters members in Queensland. Okay. Um, and within that, there's a couple of different groups. And the, the group I'll talk most about today is Farmer Assist. A, a simple way to think about it is Farmer Wants a Hunter dating site, um, because that's what it is. It's a, it's a website. If you've got a particular feral animal issue, you can put that job, uh, it's a job, you can put that job up on the website, and then people that have got particular skills, abilities, equipment that think they can fulfill that job, they will apply. And then it's up to you to filter those and see which are the better ones. Um, all SSAA members, I don't actually look at this. All SSAA members have got 20 million public liability plus personal injury cover. So if you've got that concern about uh, accidents or issues, um, there's that insurance cover for everybody that, that comes on the property. And there's also an, um, an accreditation that they need to pass. Uh, and um, in this case, it's the same as um, macropod, licensed macropod kangaroo shooters. Uh, it's the same target. So they've got to hit a target of, I think it's seven centimetres, seven or eight centimetres at 100 metres off the bench. Uh, five shots in that, that target. So they've got to um, prove that. And they've also got to, uh, there's a, a set of standards that they've got to sign off on basically um, it's all about ethics and, and being a good person and etc etc so that we so what we're trying to do because every organization every occupation every species every sex has good and not so good people or members um, and sporting shooters is no different to any other group okay you're going to have some really good ones and some that we have got rid of over the years um, they just don't don't suit ethics integrity um, whole heap of reasons. So, and there's a code of ethics around safety, animal welfare, because as we don't want anything turning up on the front page of the Courier Mail or social media, all right? Um, so, this was a program to do do a couple of things back when we launched it, when I was at Ag Force, 2013-ish, I think, um, and it was to try to lift the everything, the skill level, the ethics and everything within sporting shooter members, but it was also to, to give sporting shooter members who, a lot of them come off the land and are now stuck in, in um, metropolitan areas, urban areas, and they would love to go back out and, and shoot and, and hang out again and catch fish and, and just be out bush, but they've lost contacts because their farm might have sold and a whole heap of other reasons. So um, it was to, to bridge that country city divide in a lot of ways and to, and to provide farmers, because at the time we had a massive kangaroo issue, um, and most of the jobs at the time um, when this was launched were all charleville, Witten, and it was people were getting a thousand um, permit for a thousand kangaroos a week, um, and so they needed people to go and shoot. So that's what a lot of it was at the time. It's changed since then. Um, there's a lot, a, a much broader range of jobs that are happening. And I just had, I logged in a little bit earlier just to see what jobs are there. Um, there's a lot more hunters than there are jobs. So if you put a job up, you're going to get a lot of inquiry. So just put down what the sort of people you want and, and what your requirements are. So just go to, just Google Farmer Assist, you'll find it, and that's what it looks like. Um, and you go on, um, this is Matt put this together from head office. Uh, I should have put something up that shows what it looks like um, and what the job, so there's a few things, a few do's and don'ts. When you put a job up, there's a little pin you put for your property. Don't put it on your property. Put it in the local town or something, because you don't want everybody to turn it. You don't want people going, oh, right, he's in that bend of the river, and cool, I'll just go and drop in. You don't want that. Um, so don't put the, your exact, don't put your property name, don't put any contact details. They contact through the website, and they'll put their contact details, and then you can contact through that. And just say, look, if you've got, if it's pigs that you're after, um, you need to control. Um, 
are they local? Can they be there at short notice? Uh, how, are you, you've got dog issues? Can they trap as well as shoot? If, if you wanted to control dogs, do those members have thermal vision? Uh, who's, got, who's played with thermal vision? Who's not, who's not seen thermal imaging? Not, not at all? Some people don't even know what it's like. You're looking like an emu. Mm -hmm. um, thermal vision, uh, thermal vision, and Clint's got a set over there, but we can show you outside if we go outside later. It picks up heat. So you can be sitting in complete pitch black night time and you can see everything in the paddock. Um, you can see dogs turning up. So you can sit there and ambush dogs at night time and they don't know you're there, as long as you're downwind, obviously. Um, and so that's a bit of a game changer. It's a massive game changer on pigs as well. Because if you're driving around a paddock uh, at night looking for pigs with a spotlight, there'll be pigs outside of spotlight range, but if you pick up a thermal, you'll be able to see them. Um, and you'll see them out of spotlight range, and you'll stop and you'll go, okay, what's our, what's our plan of attack? How are we going to sneak up on these things and get more than just one? What sort of range are you talking about? You know, that thermal Oh, at least a kilometre. Yeah. Depends on the quality of your... Depends on the quality, yeah. You can, yeah. Yep, and and it depends on the weather a lot too, with the, the viewing distance. Reliably to see what a target is is up to a kilometre, yeah. but you can pick up heat to yeah. a lot yeah. further yeah. than a kilometre. Um, so that's that's basically that that program. There's there's another one. Um, I won't probably won't have a lot of time to go into it. Um, so Matt Dodson's the, the only contact really for Farmer Assist in Australia. Um, you can ring me and, and have a chat to me. I've got a login for me as the hunter and me as a landholder, so I can see both sides, um, see how it works. I can't look at any of your stuff. Matt can look at your stuff, and if there's any errors or issues, he can fix that up. Um, and yeah, any other questions? Um, so that's that's one program. That's the program where if you've got a, an issue, you can put that job up, and people apply, and then you filter those people. Um, there's another group in Queensland which is uh, conservation wildlife management um, and there's only about 500 of us in that group and we work on national parks in Queensland um, we, that's it on hold at the moment to, until they finish their workplace health and safety review um, but there's about 60 odd 60 odd properties <coughs> across Queensland including a few islands they're not there by mistake um, where we control feral animals. So a lot of national parks, um, a lot of wildlife, private wildlife sanctuaries as well. So, um, but they're generally, there's one out at Mooney, there's a national park and of 10 properties around it, it's about 100,000 acres uh, all up. And every two months we send teams of 15 to 30 people out there and they camp on four different, five different properties. And we've been working in with the aerial shooting program the baiting programs, um, and there's scientific studies that happen out there as well. Um, and we also apply for and manage their permit to, um, mitigation permits for the macro macropods as well, kangaroos. Um, so we manage that process, and then each, every property's got a report a spreadsheet so they can see what's, how many people have turned up, how many hours are spent, etc., etc. So if you've got large land holdings or semi-government or some other organisation that needs programmed into um, that's a really good option. Um, so it might just be large properties. If you've got a lot of properties that want people there um, very regularly and to work in with what your programs are. And that's that's a higher skill level. You've got to hit the target 100 metres um, five times, plus you've got to be able to do that 100 five times freestanding at 100 meters. So plus there's a training session, plus there's a whole heap of, we do the filtering, so if there's any rat bags, they just don't get through to the point of being up on properties. So. All volunteers, yeah, all pay their own way. You might want to put them in accommodation or give them a slab of beer or some ammo, or whatever, yeah, that's your that, call. But yeah. th it's not a, it's not a fee for service proposal. Has it's to be volunteers because our insurance only covers us if we're volunteers. We pay, we get paid. I think that needs to be made clear yes. yeah. at all times. Yeah, so that, so where we differ with the commercial guys is 
Um, if you want somebody there constantly and, and regularly to, to rebate your, your um, baiting stations and to do trapping and, and all that sort of stuff, I'd suggest, and we've been working with Clinton and a whole heap of other um, professional guys for 10 years, professional guys refer us and we refer to the professional guys because we go, look, that's not our space, you just go and hire a professional. Um, yeah. so, and any jobs that come to us, we will look at it and go, can we actually deliver a benefit here? And if we can't, we say, look, get a trapper if it's dogs and yeah. so. Um, what else is it? Oh yeah, so we're all volunteers um, and there's a team leader. So any of these projects, if people, a team turns up, there's a team leader, their, their job is to make sure everybody's operating. Um, if anybody steps out of line, we've got a code of conduct. If anybody steps out of line, they'll get sent home. Um, this happened a couple of times. So, only a couple of times. Um, and those guys, that's it, they're out. So, um, everybody, and, and the Farmer Assist program and the CWM program, they're self sufficient. So, when you put your, your job up on Farmer Assist, you can say, look, we've got accommodation, or you can camp by the creek, or you just, just give them a, an understanding of what where they're going to camp or, or stay. If you have accommodation, it's fantastic because hunters can turn up, they don't have to set up camp, um, they can chuck the portable fridge or eskies in, chuck the swag on the floor and, and they're in the paddock an hour or so later instead of setting up camp and getting the fireplace and all that stuff. Um, we have put uh, baits out before, um, in national parks, so and we do a lot of monitoring of um, cameras and changing stuff as well. Um, one thing with a lot of these, and you, you'll see if you can figure it out with your, if you're going to put a job up on Farmer Assist, do you want people there 24-7? Because um, when we put a pro, when we do projects, we'll have five, six people on a property, and you'll have the guys that want to walk the creek lines and um, the bushy areas, then you'll have the, the ones that have got the thermal equipment and they've got video set up in their car so they drive around in total darkness and, and they've got night vision so there's no lights and bang, things get, get whacked and there's no lights. Um, and then the guys out during the day doing the same. So the ferals on the place that, that stay for that week get a, get a pretty good hammering. Um, and then the ones that a lot of them take off to the neighbour's place and that's how we've ended up growing um, because we get a really good name and then they talk to the neighbours and then we, we work in with their other programs as well. So.